So there's this app on iPhones and I fully expect the Android guys are a little bit jealous. It's not quite true. I actually know the Android guys are very jealous of what this app can do. It's incredible. And after this video, I fully expect you Android guys to be inundating the inbox of the developers of this app because you're going to want this too. The app is kind of like a, a long exposure app, but it's even longer. <laughs> I couldn't resist. So what we're doing with this app, we can create long exposure photos up to like 10 hours, I think it is, on a bloody phone. That's just ridiculous. It's a bit of a game changer when it comes to long exposure photography with mobile devices. These are not your typical long exposures from a phone though. They're usually a little bit grainy. They're not very well focused. It's a little bit choppy. These are good. These are really, really good. They're sharp, they're crisp. For me to recommend an app to you guys, it needs to like, fill a few boxes, three boxes really. One, is it easy to use? Because it's phone photography and if it's not easy to use, well, why are we doing it? Two, is it better than anything else out there that's available? Because why would I recommend something to you when the next thing is just better? And three, how good are the results? If the results are good, if they're worthwhile doing, I'm gonna show you what it is. So far, this app, it ticks all three of those boxes. It's easy to use, the results are good, and it's better than anything else. But I've done a review on this app before. Even longer, I've done it before, and we had photos just like this. They're amazing photos. Why am I bringing you another video? It's because they've done more. This app developer hasn't just sat there and gone, there's a kick-ass app, go and enjoy it. He's made a kick-ass app even more kick-ass. He's added more functionality to this. He's added so much more functionality that I can't do it all on my own. I'm actually going to bring someone in to give me a hand. Hi everyone, David here. And since Shane hasn't seen a car since about 1992, I'm going to be taking you through light trails in even longer today. I'm going to take you through how they work, how easy they are to set up, what the results look like, and how they compare to other apps. So keep watching for that, or just skip straight to me. I'm sure Shane will include some timestamps if he's not too busy wrestling a crocodile. <laughs> so even longer used to have just the one mode and that was the frame averaging mode. It was just a typical long exposure app and it did an incredibly good job and it still does do an incredibly good job. But he's added two more features to this. One is light trails as in traffic light trails. And I'm probably going to do something else with that mode later on in another video. But for this video, we're talking about the other mode that it has, and that is Star Trails. And <laughs> it does it really, really well. Star Trails for the iPhone have always been done, in my opinion, best with a nightcap app, and it has a Star Trails mode in that app. And it's a really, really, really good app. And if I was to say that uh, nightcap app, Star Trail mode is a very good app, I'm going to say that even longer in Star Trail mode, is just bloody brilliant. To give you an example of what I mean, here is a photo that I've taken with Nightcap app in Star Trail mode, and here is a photo that I've taken with even longer in Star Trail mode. You tell me which one is better. There are two types of Star Trails, and this app does it incredibly well. You've got the circular sort of Star Trails, and that's pointing south or pointing north. You basically get your compass out, bring you south. I've explained how to find south before, but if you've got an iPhone, it's got a bloody compass in there. Find south a little bit off the horizon and you're going to be shooting those circular sort of star trails and if you're in the northern hemisphere find the northern star or just use your compass go to north point the same sort of direction and you're going to get the circular sort of um, star trails as well if you want the linear ones basically don't point south or don't point north point somewhere else and you're going to get the linear ones simple as that let's set this app up now for star trails we'll go into the app open the app up close there We'll go to Star Trails, it's already on Star Trails mode, but it's the button down the center in the left hand side on that row. It's got FA now, which is frame averaging. We've got light trails and we've got Star Trails. Star Trails is what we're doing here. The duration now is where we're going to set it down the bottom there in the gear icon. Go into there at the top there, you've got total time now for Star Trail photography. Really, you want to be 40 minutes. You don't really want to be less than 40 minutes. You can do it, but you're going to get much better results. It's going to look pretty bloody good at 40 minutes or more. This will go up to 10 hours. 10 hours, that would be awesome. Anyway, let's carry on. We'll go to 40 minutes. At the top there, that's an hour, 50, 40 minutes. It does save it at intervals as well. And if you save it at the intervals, well, you don't get the whole lot. It'll, so it'll save it for five minutes, then it will save the 10 minutes worth of photo, maybe then the 15 minutes worth of photo, the 20 minutes worth of photo, not five, 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 five. Important to remember that. 
Down the bottom here, or through midway through, you've got RAW, JPEG, and TIFF, and then you've got the shutter uh, delay. And I'll always recommend to you keep this on a good tripod because it's incredibly sharp, and any little bump is going to ruin your photo. Trust me, it's that sharp. So I would make sure you've got a delay on there. So when you hit the shutter button, you're not touching anything when it goes off. But two seconds is fine for me. Hit the X down the bottom. Now we'll talk about focusing. Focusing on this is not going to work because I've got lights going on here so you can see my ugly mug as I'm talking to you. But basically you're going to go on the left hand side of those boxes. We've got manual focus, auto focus as well. So we're going to go to manual focus. It's going to, it's just like photographing stars with your phone anyway. I'll turn this light off and that'll give us a bit more light there. And you can see there's some stars out there on the horizon. I'm going to hit the magnifying glass and bring that magnifying glass onto one of those stars. Because it's just so bloody dark, it's a little bit difficult. There we go. Right there. That star is now in the magnifying glass and we adjust the, mag we adjust the focusing now with those arrows. I'm just going to go to the right. The small arrows, the single arrows, will go one stop at a time. The double arrows will go ten stops at a time. I'm going to go to the double one to bring up to 89. And already that's gone really super, super sharp. I found that about 87, 88, 89 on focusing on the stars is pretty much on the, on the money there. So I'm going to go to 88. And we'll leave it there. That's it. There's nothing else to do. Nothing. Hit the shutter button and we wait. Still waiting. It's about 20 minutes to go. Tonight I think is what's called the Naked Planet Night. As in you can see tonight, you can see all the planets that you can see with the naked eye at once. So right now, like you can see Saturn. And you can see Jupiter. You can see Mars. It's, it's kind of cool. I'm not going to show you them because they just look like stars. But if you had a telescope, tonight's the night. If you're just into stargazing, tonight's the night. Definitely worth getting out there. But by, mind you, by the time you're watching this, it's probably gone. This is what happens when you're waiting in the middle of the night to take long exposure photos. You just kind of bamble on up to yourself. And you guys are watching the video, so you're bambling as well to me. You know what we should do? While we're waiting for this thing to finish, let's go over to the UK and see what old mate David's up to with some light trails. We'll come back here in a minute. All right, let's take a look at the light trails. So the first thing you need to know is that the quality of the light trails themselves can be excellent and you can produce some really stunning photos. And I'm using Can because I found keepers like this a bit few and far between because the app gets in its own way. You see, because there's no manual controls, you have to rely on the app to choose the correct shutter speed and ISO for you. And in my experience, it often selects an ISO that's too high, resulting in my photos being too bright or a shutter speed that's too fast, producing these gaps in the trails. And at first I thought it was me not being familiar with the app that was the problem, but I went out shooting four nights in a row and I ended up taking around 270 photos. And after all that time and all those photos, I was still having the same issues. The high ISO can also degrade image quality. And when you're shooting in RAW, as even longer can do, if you subscribe to its pro membership, this is the last thing you want because these raw files need all the help they can get in low light. It's a shame to degrade these beautiful textures because when you keep the ISO low, like anything under 125, the textures look really nice, much nicer in fact than the processed and compressed files you get from other apps. And if you do find yourself overexposed by a stop or two, you can usually recover the bright whites and highlights. So despite my issues with the exposure, I'm still going to be turning to even longer from now on when I want to capture light trails because I just can't ignore that raw quality. And the issue with the exposure can definitely be fixed, I think. The best and most obvious solution would be to add full manual controls, just like you get 
in the Moment app. That way you can take control and really fine tune your exposure. Now, not being an app developer, I've no idea how easy this would be to implement if it's even possible. But the only other solution I can think of would be to like limit the ISO and the shutter speed to a certain range, which would just introduce its own set of issues. See, I'm not just all about the complaining. I do like to think of solutions uh, at the same time. Whether or not those solutions are practical is, uh, is a complete other issue. Anyway, thank you for checking out my section on the light trails. Thanks to Shane for having me on his channel. I hope you enjoyed my section and now back to the bloody legend himself. He does a pretty good job, doesn't he? So look, I think that's, that's enough to make this bloke who lives in the country want to go to the city and take some photos in amongst all those people and traffic and away from my wonderful night skies. It doesn't really want to make me go to the city at all, but he did a bloody good job in this app, in the city with those lights. That's just bloody amazing. I'm really impressed with that. This is now finished. Have a look at this photo. This is the unedited photo. And you see how nice and crisp and sharp that is. It's really, really, really impressive. This is out of a mobile phone. That's just bloody ridiculous. I can see lots of people having a lot of fun with this. Double exposures, putting things in the foreground. I reckon Mr. Russell Brown will be doing some pretty cool stuff with this app. Um, have a look here as well. Here are the interval photos and you can see there how it's built up over time. Really quite cool. Now, if you want to see these photos, head over to phonephotoschool.com.au. I'll put them all there so you can have a look at them, download them and, and well, see what you want to see before you go and lay down your whole $9 to do what we're doing with this. Also, if you're into this sort of photography, we've got a really good Facebook group going on over there on Facebook with Shane Moss and Mobile Photography, Dash Bloody Legends. Head over there, join the community, make sure you answer all the questions. We don't let any crap in, like no bots and things like that. So make sure you answer everything and we'll let you in and you'll join a pretty cool community there. We do a lot of sharing, a lot of cool things that are being help, helping out each other. It's probably one of the better, actually, I'm getting, hand on heart, it's probably the best mobile photography Facebook group out there. It's a very, very good thriving group. We also have memberships now on this channel. If you click down wherever it says join just below this video, you can join the channel membership and you get a, quite a few cool perks out of this. It costs you like five bucks a month or something like that, five or six bucks a month. Um, and you're going to get a live video every month. You're gonna get some behind the scenes sort of stuff. You're going to get all the presets that are over there at phonephotoschool.com.au. They're five bucks each. You're gonna get them all for free. So anyway, if you're in that sort of thing, feel free to support the channel and join the club. Thanks, David Addison. Awesome doing a video with you, mate. Really, really enjoyed it. All the way from the UK. I think uh, we might do something like this again in the future, mate. Anyway, thanks, guys. I'll see you all next week. Catch you later.